Thank you for listening to Lone Star Community Radio. This program was broadcasted and recorded live from the LSCR studios in downtown Conroe, Texas. Lone Star Community Radio is supported by listeners like you. Donate and sponsor today. For more information on getting involved with Lone Star Community Radio, contact us at lscrstudios at gmail.com or visit us online at www.irlonestar.com. Hitting you like a wave of indifference. It's the audience of one show on Conroe's 106.1 and 104.5 FM. Streaming on IRLoneStar.com and available wherever you get your podcast from. I am Andrew, sitting next to the guy who uses a foam cannon to wash his cyber truck. It's Dick. I'm a hot rodent. Schistler. Happy 4th of July, buddy. Almost. 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 Day before. Almost. But, you know. Got big plans for the weekend? Yeah, I got invited to go to the water and be part of a boat parade. To the water? Yeah, Port, you come, O'Connor, what, do Port you, O'Connor. Do you come from the water? I am, was born in the water. Look at you. <laughs> Port O'Connor. Okay, yeah. I thought you said from the water. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't really know what that area is called because it's the Gulf of Mexico, but yes. I, there's, people get real descriptive with you know bays and like bodies of water. <laughs> yes, they generally have names to them. Yeah, yeah. but I don't know the, the full detail. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm going. Well, what's funny is I'm going to a boat parade and I'm you know talking to my buddy and I was like, is this gonna be like one of those Trump things? Oh no! I bet you there, without a doubt, there will because, be some MAGA flags. Well, yeah, you know, if it. you do a boat parade. I've never been in on a boat parade. So I was like, that cool. I want to. Yeah, I did not out. know that actually existed until you just mentioned that. Yeah. before. a boat. Well, parade. I know they have That's one cool. here at the lake. Okay. But it's for different things. It's usually for, like, I know they do one for Fourth of July, and I know they mm-hmm. do one for New Year's. And there might be a special one that's like a, a an annual just event that they do on the lake. Sure. But it's just the neighborhood doing it. Sounds so, like it could get a little rowdy, too. Well, that's what I'm really excited about, because you know how I like to do that. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. so that's going to be a lot of fun. I don't even care about fireworks. I just want to celebrate right. America. Be out on, on a boat. boat. Yeah. And drink yeah. beer. Have you ever thought of the fact that... Every picture that you've ever been in, by definition, is a dick pic. Yeah. I get, to, I get told that Because your name's all the time. Richard, you know. Yeah. Just kind of thought about that the other day. I'm like, does he realize every picture is a dick pic? Yeah, it's pretty nice, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, Don't know where that came from. <laughs> I, I mean, that's not like I haven't heard all the jokes. That's not really a joke, man. That's a flex. That is, it is big, it's a big flex. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, what are your plans, man? You've been traveling. Yeah, so I don't don't have any plans because I just got back from a nine day Florida vacation to Disney World. And I am prepared, Dick, to give you a full review of Walt Disney World Orlando. Okay, before you go, I was, you sent me some pictures and Uh there were some creepy things going on because I didn't understand what was happening. (laughs) Because when I think of Disney World, I think of young children. But right. you don't really have young no, children. No. So you were there to support your son, right? Yeah, so I'll I'll get to that here in okay, a minute. Sure, but yeah, yeah. I was really confused when you sent me pictures of like a workout thing and I go, That's not Disney World. So yeah, I was there uh for the Department of Defense Wounded Warrior Games, um what? and then all, which was taking place in Orlando this okay. year. And okay. we uh, since we were there in, there in Orlando decided to also go to Disney World. So, okay. but I I uh, I think I will talk next week about the uh Wounded Warrior Games, which okay, is pretty cool. interesting. This week I'll talk a little bit about Disney World in and of itself. And I am prepared to give a full review, Dick. Are you ready for my full review of Disney World? And that's in Florida. Florida. Disneyland's in California. Correct. All right. So Disney World. Go yes, sure. Disney World. It's okay. And this concludes my review of okay. Disney World. I, okay, now that we gotten that over, I want you to explain. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to pull up the picture because it's personal. Yeah. But you sent me a picture mm-hmm. that literally no one was there. Sure. Yeah. But it was in front of a giant castle. Uh huh. And I go, that doesn't look right. There's literally no one in that picture but yeah. your family. It's it's AI. It, is no it? no. That particular picture was taken uh, late near park closing time, and that was a special event where they closed the park for the Wounded Warrior Games. Oh. So we had the park for, to ourselves for a few hours. Oh. Yeah, okay. and so there was, you know, very few people there. Um, but no, at the other times I went, 
very crowded. Well, no, it's just because when I think of Disney World, I think of crowded. But like the picture you have, I was like, that looks really yeah. unique. How do they get that? Like, there's literally no Correct. one in front of that, like around. And usually, there's some person in the right. background, you know, picking their nose or something. Something, but there's yeah. literally no one there. And I go, man, that looks really yeah. special. So no, the Disney parks were. I went to um, Epcot and uh, the Magic Kingdom. Very busy. It was extremely hot. Um, look, man. Any, it ranges from probably 30 to 50 years old on most things. It looks like Disney's showing its age. It's extremely, extremely expensive. The food's okay. The hospitality, here's what they did do right. The hospitality is top-notch. The hotels are nice. The food's decent. Um, but for the most part, it just seemed like it was any other amusement park. Well, and it's supposed to be? Uh, well, it's Disney. And I feel like if I don't say anything other than it's the most amazing, magical place in the world... I'm the flawed guy, right? But you don't really like Disney, though. I had never been. I had something built up in my no, head I mean, since I mean childhood. Disney, like Disney. No, I'm not a Disney a, guy. Yeah, no, me either. No. So, like the Star Wars thing would be cool. That was really cool. That so, was by far the best part. And but I don't really count that as Disney, unfortunately, it's, it's, in my mind. It's, yeah, no, they bought it, right? Well, and I know, and some of the newer rides, like the Rise of the Resistance, the Ratatouille, and, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, these are their newer rides that use newer technology and holograms and 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 sort of. Um, coasters that aren't actually on rails and they move in 360 degrees those are top notch but the rest of them look a little dated just gonna yeah say but that. yeah i guess if you're a disney head or you want to call them like they'd be more yeah. fun but yeah. if you're not really like and again don't have young children so uh, although the benefit of not having young children is at least they will remember it and there's nothing worse than taking a two or three year old and then you know ten years later they're like, I don't even remember that trip because I I think and Dad's I like went. I'm still paying off the the Discover card for is that is that where the Tower of Terror is yes that's in Hollywood Studios because yeah I but, saw that but is that part of Disney oh I guess I went to Hollywood Studios as well sorry is that part oh, no, of... uh, yes okay. Holly, Hollywood Studios there's Epcot Hollywood Studios Magic Kingdom and uh, Animal Kingdom because I've been, then I've been to Disney World. But I don't remember. Oh. Like I remember the ride. <laughs> I remember how cool it was. Well, there's Universal Studios as well, okay. which is not a part of Disney, but Hollywood um, Studios is. So that, yeah. that tells you how much I remember as a young kid. Is I didn't know I went to Disney World, but I remember the ride. And right. I don't know if it was part of Disney World. I just it remember is. Yeah. My parents got really mad at me wanting to stay in that line. I'm like, this is gonna be so cool. This yeah. is gonna be so cool. And then what's great? There is a picture somewhere of me since I was so small and frail. You, if you remember that ride, it's all connected. The rail, it's not individual rail, rails when I went. So was, I didn't it, ride it. It was the whole seat, so like mm -hmm. the 10 people. Right, and then one, it just drops. One big thing. <laughs> right. So since I'm so small and my dad's so big, I was sitting right next to him, and I had about this much room between the bar Oh, right, because it only goes down. So you were about to so fly out. in the picture, you see me like almost as Levitating. Long, levitating, and I'm just like, ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so th that's always fun. And well, One observation I had that I definitely wanted to bring to note, and this was at Epcot. I don't know what I was expecting at Epcot. Um, you know, basically, if, if you're not familiar with it, it's it's little villages throughout the park that are supposed to uh, resemble areas throughout the, the world. That's the only place you can buy beer, right? No, there's beer all over Disney. That is one thing they did uh, okay. pretty good. You can buy booze and beer all over that place. Because I just remember nice. that was the, like, that because the Epcot, Ep Epcot has Epcot. like the 30 four beers from around the world. Yeah, there, yeah, it was pretty interesting. So yeah, you've got like uh, Canada, Great Britain, Spain, China, Japan, all these different villages. And you know, as you walk from world to world or village to village, uh, so the you, food and everything changes. Did, and did you do what I would have done is change my accent to <laughs> right to each one? <laughs> Hello. So the one thing I wanted to point out is most of the shops offer basically the same goods, slightly different, maybe themed like a Germany theme or an Italian theme or whatever. But in the China world, they were selling katanas or swords, if you're not familiar with what okay. a katana is. And I thought to myself, if you're the type of guy who is so inclined to buy a katana for 200 up to $2,000, you're probably not going to want to buy it from Disney World, Right. You're probably going to want to purchase it off of a Sherpa in the Himalayas or something so that you have some kind of story behind it. Oh, Who's really? buying these things uh, at Disney World? Don't you get anything from Disney World. And I think the type of guy who would buy a katana probably has a ponytail, right? Maybe is really into reptiles as a pet. Maybe he's got a Komodo dragon as a pet. I'm like, I'm really stereotyping here. He just doesn't seem like the type of guy who's going to has Disney. a special funk to him. <laughs> right, yeah. I don't know.
<laughs> well, I mean, I'm all for it. Whatever. I mean, yeah, yeah. Oh, by the way, I did see Goofy, and you know, we had the story a couple of de- uh, weeks ago about the old grandma grabbing his butt. Snip, I snip, Gooch. I wanted to grab his butt, but I refrained. It was close. It was close. Did he actually have a butt though? Remember we talked about like, does he even have a butt? Oh, it was there, man. Juicy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I I mean, I guess by by definition, what kind of pants does he, he have? He's got a a butt. <laughs> Is he a dog or is he a huge rat? <laughs> I thought he was a dog. Yeah, he's oh, a dog. He, so he wears jeans. Yeah, he wears okay. like big baggy pants. Okay, so he okay because for some reason I always thought he had like a shirt over the butt and it was like so it's not really pronounced. No, you don't. Well, I mean, you don't really see his butt, I guess. But she uh, she got a handful, and I I managed to avoid that controversy. Thank you very much. Okay, cool. I mean, yeah, like, but Disney man, Disney I don't World. know that I will go back. You know, Anytime soon. I gotta ask this because I watched. There's a really cool. Let me see if I can just double check. If there's a cool little educational documentary about ticketing systems, mm-hmm. and they focus on Disney throughout the years of how they per- sure. perfected the whole ticketing tracking. They get all you stuff. coming and going. Let yeah. me let me tell you. And so when you went, you had you had to get like the armband. He, no, it was through a card. So they gave you a card. Yeah, so it was every- an actual, like, it looked like a room key to a, to a hotel. And it worked everywhere. Yeah, and you use that to get into rides, to get into the park. You could actually hook it up to your um, debit card if you wanted. It was yeah. basically your lifeline if you wanted to. Cause- it was hooked up to the fast passes if you wanted to. I didn't want to talk too much about Disney because if people are interested in that, there's a well, plethora of videos that you can watch. I haven't you know, been. So it. when you went, did you have to, like, call? Like, how did you get tickets? Did you get me a scalper? No, I bought them the day of or the night before or something like Online. that. Online. Yeah, everything's done through the Disney app now. If you don't have yeah, the app, what I was wondering. forget it. So, and then they bring it to your door at the hotel? Bring what? The card. No, you get that at the gate. Okay. Yeah, you show them your, your ticket on the, the app, and then they provide you a card, uh, okay. and the card is synced up with your app, and yeah, it's so fancy. But yeah, you can't do anything without well, that Well, that's app what I was anymore. wondering, because that kind of stuff interests me, because be mainly because how expensive it is. So it costs it, an arm and a leg. Was it like 150 bucks a person or more? For a, um, a, a little more. Now, we had some discounts provided to us, thank goodness, but um, it was still very expensive. I think a full day pass, they fluctuate depending on demand. Isn't that crazy? It was like 179 when we were there because it was packed. So 100, 180 bucks. Yeah, just to, get in, just to get in the door. Yeah. And then some of the rides, now you have to patch, uh, purchase separately this Genie Pass that allows you to get uh, you know, special access into the rides. That's $22 a person. Okay. And you can, yeah, I know. And then in What's certain rides. What special access? What does that mean? Uh, like Lightning Lanes Fast Pass. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry, I, yeah, not special access. But uh, nah. so you don't have to wait in line with the commoners. You, you can get this. <laughs> that's uh, not bad, though, $22. Yeah, this Fast Pass. I feel like that's worth it. $22 per person. Uh, but then, in addition, if the the ride is in high demand, it's an additional twenty some odd dollars per ride per person. Oh, so, so twenty dollars per ride? No, only on certain ones. It's the, it's twenty two dollars per person to get the fast pass. Yeah. But then, if it's a real high demand one, it's even more. It's it like I said, it gets pretty ridiculous. How do you but even know until you get there? It's all on the app. It'll tell you what the rate is that's if it's so, in high demand. That's so yeah, weird it's it's to basically. Me. It's up to date and live, and you can only buy, um, or you can reserve a ride, one ride per hour. Oh, okay. So yeah. there you go. Yeah. So you can, well, because in my mind, I'm thinking as the as the provider, mm-hmm. you're probably looking at this app. The meter, every, the meter is always running. And you're yes. like, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. And you don't want to, you don't want to, and it's a delicate game, right? Because you don't want to purchase um, fast passes for things that you don't need. So basically, you go up to the ride, and you look at the, uh, the regular access, and you kind of judge, all right. It's 45 minutes right now, but if we wait a little bit, it might be 20, and then we don't have to buy a fast pass for it if it's going down, you know. And it's just a date. You don't have to. You don't have to stay on the area. Like you don't even have to be in the hotel to go. Like you. Can just no, the hotels are separate. Although some of them do have hotels there on site as well. Because what I'm curious of now, I'm like want to see their prices. Because what I want to know is what's the ultimate price? Like to get everything. Everything's included. I don't have to worry about money. I'm just like, here's... I, I wouldn't know. You wouldn't? Why? No, they do have, like, park hopper um, passes that let, allow you to go from park to park, so you don't have to just be at one all day. They have three- and four-day passes that are, like, three or $400, which, if you average it out, is a deal, quote-unquote a deal, per person, that is. Um, but, yeah, a lot of the rides, you know, some of them that had five minutes, were like, oh, let's go get on this. I would see why they had five minutes, because it looked like it was straight out of 1981. Nothing had been updated on it. The animatronics were woefully out of date, and it was kind of sad in some cases. But the, the newer rides, Disney definitely did well. 
Okay. Well, I want to look yeah. up. I want so for the next show. What I hope to bring you is like, okay. hey, it's going to be ten thousand dollars a person. It's not a person, but ten thousand is probably a good estimate for a family of four to do it right. Maybe a little less than that. Once you include flights and everything, that's that's probably a pretty good estimate. Did you see the uh, fight? Speaking of uh, theme parks, did you see there was a big fight at Bush Gardens this past week? No, is it on like online to watch? Yeah, it's kind of going viral, and it's see. weird because I don't know anything about Bush Gardens. I've been there. Okay. It, to me, it doesn't seem like a place where there would be a large fight. Am I? Yeah, I mean, people just get, it's probably hot, and people get agitated waiting in line. And drinking beer. Well, I don't, maybe. Remember, I don't, I don't remember that. Because isn't Bush like the beer people? Or is that a separate Bush? No, <laughs> I don't know. This is separate. Okay. I don't really know anything about it, but it certainly didn't sound to me like a place where there would be a lot of fights. Um, much like... I don't know, like Dolly World, you wouldn't expect to see a, a, a fight uh, there. Well, or maybe I, like not. Actually, I can probably see that. Knott's Berry fa- Farms, I don't think there'd be a fight there. I, I want a picture with Dolly. Oh, yeah, and I suppose a lot of Karens Dolly. running around there. So Bush Gardens is in Tampa Bay. I didn't know, I don't remember that. And then uh, it's a theme park. Yeah, it's in Tampa Bay, Florida, so it has nothing to do with Bush. Beer. Every, everything has to do with Bush, my friend. Yeah. Beer. Yeah. Okay. Well. Well. Anyways, I just thought I just didn't know if you had seen that fight. And it, to me, it was just shocking. Is it? It seemed like a place that would that would not occur. I mean, like if it was at a Waffle House, you go, oh, I get that. Fights happen all the time there at a mall. But I didn't think that people at at a theme park would act like such ruffians. <laughs> Guess I, like I was it. wrong. I like it. Awesome, man. Were you about ready to start this show off? I thought we already did. No, sir. We did not. Staying on this theme of summer, a lot of people will be traveling, so the first couple of stories will revolve around traveling. And in this story, traveling to the beach, a Maine woman enjoying a walk on a popular beach learned that quicksand doesn't just happen in Hollywood movies or jungles or forests. Did you hear this story about this woman walking on a beach got sucked up by quicksand? I have to admit, I did think quicksand was going to be a much larger problem in my life than it actually turned out to be because it was a popular movie tropes in the 80s and 90s. You'd see it in in cartoons all the time. There was quicksand, and some character would always run into it, but I don't think it's nearly as um, prevalent as one might expect. But Jamie Accord was walking at the water's edge at Popham Beach State Park over the weekend when she sunk to her hips in a split second, letting out a stunned scream. And then she told her husband, I can't get out. The thing about this, though, is... yeah. And then he sat there and went... Let me think about this for a minute. <laughs> We're going to pro and con this real yeah. quick. Yeah. There's no one around. <laughs> no one can hear her scream. No one can hear her scream. But, I mean, there's no pictures. If you look look at the story, there's no yeah, pictures there's no. of her in the actual, which I guess makes more sense if you're in a, a panic trying to get someone out. You're probably not going to stop and take pictures of it, although I probably would have snapped one for my Insta. Well, I'm curious mainly because I haven't really seen any actual footage of pe- someone accidentally getting into quicksand like i've seen people do oh well, can you survive quicksand right and they show you like a demonstration that they found a puddle and they're like here's me getting stuck in quicksand mm-hmm. but it's not what you think it is where within under 10, 10 seconds. seconds and i bet you that's what the husband was judging you know seeing how far she would go and then when she finally stopped said oh man i guess i have to get her out is it turns out quicksand is known as super saturated sand and it is a real thing um, but again, you're not, it's not something that you normally see, and you certainly are not expecting to see it on a beach in Maine. But it says that people who are caught in supersaturated sand tend to remain buoyant. So it's not like you, you, quick as, or you, quick, you sink as quickly as you would think in the movies. You do tend to kind of stay at a certain point, and then you're done. It's just hard to get out of. I just immediately think of the never-ending story in Atreyu and that horse yeah. sinking. I think that um, <laughs> that was a part of everyone's childhood that we can't seem to unsee now yeah a tray you uh <laughs> it happens it does man we have talked about YouGov before and we've done some stories on YouGov. Um, well they recently put out a another poll which uh, about airplane behaviors and what americans think are acceptable and unacceptable while on an airplane i think this is probably a good time to do this story since again a lot of people will be traveling for this summer now there's a bunch on this list and i don't know that we're going to cover all of them but i think some of them some are, are kind of funny some are pretty great yeah some of them are pretty funny maybe we scroll down the bottom and we start with some of the ones that are more acceptable so we get a baseline yeah. and then we'll go to the ones that people think are unacceptable so like recline their seat okay this seems to be always a hot topic but only 26 percent of people think that's unacceptable and i think it's perfectly fine too well, why Recline'd would it be seat. there exactly 
Exactly. And it reclines like three quarters of an inch anyways. So what does it really matter? Yeah. Uh, chat with a stranger next to them for the entire flight. 29% feel that is inappropriate. I have to admit, the entire time, mm-mm. Mm-mm. Well, I mean, that's situational again. It's like you don't have to. T- you can tell somebody, hey, I'm putting these headphones on. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. It's real easy. It's, it's real not easy like, to do. It's not like everyone's forced to talk to each other. <laughs> exactly. I like this one. Lie down on the seats when sitting in an empty row. Thirty-four percent of the respondents thought that was inappropriate. And to me, who cares? Yeah. He's not in your row and it's empty. I, I mean, I might be jealous. I would do that. I would. I would do. And I think that's what these thirty-four percent of people are doing. They're just, they're just jealous. Well, I mean, it, it was one that confuses me. It's the one that's the most acceptable on this list. Was use a laptop on the table tray. Yeah. And I'm thinking only six like, percent yeah, thought like, that was inappropriate. It, yeah, like what else? Like that's your space. You can kind of do whatever you want. Yep, I thought so too. Uh, remove their shoes. Now we're starting to move into areas that I tend to think are inappropriate. Fifty-five oh. percent of all travelers in this poll thought that removing shoes. See, I can see myself removing shoes if I'm on the plane for more than six hours. Yeah, I suppose. Because I mean, like two-hour trip, not big deal. Keep them Four on, hour trip. Ugh. But six plus, like you're really gonna wear s- shoes for that long? Yeah, and I guess if you're in a plane that's got air conditioning going, maybe your feet have cooled off. But if you're getting in from a hot area and you immediately take them off, you're gonna have that funky corn chip smell. I don't, I don't really smell. have smelly feet. Oh, mm-hmm. do you want to do a test? No, we're good. Is that because you have smelly feet? <laughs> oh yeah, mine are rancid. But see that, that again, I don't see that being a problem. But like walking around, totally get it. It's only a problem if it it's it smells. But yeah, again. Right. So I put, a blanket, you don't know. put a blanket over your feet. <laughs> Go and then, stench. <laughs> and then I, I think my favorite one on here that I read real quickly was silently pass gas. <laughs> opposed to farting so loud, like that's not acceptable, but silently passing gas is somewhat 50-50. Like, what does that even mean? Yeah, I wonder if, if the the level of unacceptableness goes up if it is audible. Silent, oh, that's bad, but audible, really bad. Actually, yeah. I think I, I tend to think the opposite. Because if it's audible, you're like, all right, I know it's coming. It's the silent ones where you're like, oh, come on, have the decency to at least call it. Give somebody some, some heads up, some warning. Mm. No. This one, this one is funny. Not paying attention during the safety demonstration. 66% people of people think that's unacceptable. Who cares? Again, if no one's paying attention, that's on them. I know where to pull on my little safety valve and blow up the thing over a water landing. If that person doesn't, well, that's do you, that's on them. Have you ever been on a plane where they have to do that special one extra question to the man who's sitting or woman who's sitting by the window that has yes the, the exit row seat? Yes, yeah. and they all have to verbally say yes that they can perform I, isn't the that duties. Wild. I was in an exit row on the way to Florida. So, so do you I, get any perks for it? Um, more leg room. And then there's that chance of death if the door flies off. You know, that's a problem these days. Uh, who cares about that? Well, uh, I mean, I kind of care about well, I mean, that, to be honest with you. Like you're kind of <laughs> Yeah, but accepting. you don't expect to get sucked out. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like if anyone gets sucked out, everyone's in danger. So regardless of where you're sitting, it's Oh, like, I think the person right there by the door is in oh, more yeah. danger. At least they'll have a lot more fun um, dying in the air. <laughs> I suppose, I suppose. But instead of crashing and burning to your death, it's more of like, oh, great, I'm going to land... <laughs> But no, uh, <sighs> that's funny. I've only been on a plane a couple times. I know, so. I know. We've got a few more here. Leave their seat during turbulence. Again, 82% feel this is unacceptable. I don't care. You do you. That's on you. 82% again feel that getting drunk is unacceptable. Which is so wild to it me. It is unacceptable only if he or she is yelling out things like that mf or isn't real or you know yeah. causing a scene. But otherwise, get it on, dude. I don't care. If you're not right. bothering anybody. Right. And the number one, 86% of people feel that letting their children play in the aisle is the most unacceptable act while on an airplane. So uh, I got a couple of things to talk about with the, this list. And I have to ask you, since you travel more, a lot of the things on this list, I feel like it has to be a special circumstance. Like the cat on board. On board. Like yes. I feel like if you have to bring a cat, there's special 50%. there's special requirements. So like no one's just bringing cats on planes. I have yet to see a cat. That's on what I'm an saying. So that's such yeah. a strange dogs. Yes. Why wouldn't they just say animal? Right. Uh, no. Specifically, they're calling out a cat. I guess it's because a dog you would expect could have some reasonable behavior. So like training, and, whereas a cat's just like uh uh-uh. uh. And like eat strong smelling food. Mm-hmm. I have had someone eat fish next to me on a plane. It was quite. Well, how do disturbing. they get fish on the plane? You can bring food on. 
Oh, you can? You can bring food into, the, yeah, to the airport. I, was, I knew you could bring snacks, but it's like... He had a full-on Tupperware tray that he opened up, and it was not sushi, but it might as well have been. Sushi didn't really smell, though. Yeah, well, this fish was... St- so, okay, I didn't Dang know that, because that yeah. that's interesting to me, because yeah. a lot of these things, I'm like, uh, what is that? Like, leave your seat during turbulence. Most people don't do that. That's not like an inconsiderate thing, because most people aren't going to do that. Especially now, uh, we were hearing a lot of stories of some... You know, increasingly more turbulent flights where people have been um, walking around when that occurs and they have gotten severely injured. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's but that's the on norm. them. That's not the norm. No, and again, it doesn't bother me. Like, if someone's walking in the seatbelt signs, I'm like, you do you, boo. You do you. Uh, but yeah, I think my favorite one on here, I, you might have mentioned it, was watching a movie with nudity. Oh, yeah. In fact, that see to me like, to me that's hilarious. Yeah, and, yeah. and but also that's called a bonus. Yes, it is, especially considering if you have small children around, and some of the and you're not s- letting them run around. Some of the um, movies that they offer in flight are quite uh, inappropriate at times, and they do say consider people around you before selecting this one. You know, so Debbie does uh, Dallas or something. You know, speaking of the, like because towards the end of, uh, top of the list of the unacceptable stuff, it, it's kind of like it transfers towards normal day life. I wanted to tell you this: I was bowling uh, last week. And I guess the team that was around us brought, like, every single one of their kids and uncles. Mm-hmm. Because I had this awkward situation. For some reason, they parked all the children. I'm talking about nine kids. Parked the children. Parked okay. the children by the bathroom. Mm. So, and you've been there before. Mm-hmm. So there's a corner in the building, and it has a bathroom door right mm-hmm. there at the corner. And so imagine trying to use the restroom while trying to navigate through, like, nine, ten kids. And they're all sitting there on the iPads. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and you and you got a buzz and you got a pee, and right? I got a pee, yeah, and exactly. I'm like, what is going on over here? Like, why are they by the bathroom? I could get like go anywhere else, but they like are camped out by the Maybe bathroom. Maybe they felt they were out of the way that way. And so I've, I've never felt that awkward looking down at small children going, "Please excuse me, can you get out of the way? Please, excuse me. I just really need to pee. Like, just get out of my way." And uh, by the way, what level are you on in the game? And then you have to leave the bathroom. Yes. And of course, when you open the door, they T- all typically. go like this, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Like, what are you expecting? This is not yeah. a one-way <laughs> I did, adventure I, here." I, it, it really weirded me out, and I was like, "I look at the, I look at the people who brought their kids. Like, what? What made them go six tables over? We need to put our kids over there." Yeah, like, do you really hate your kids? Because I would have voted unacceptable. That's right, that. unacceptable place. Well, staying on this topic of children, when a woman who didn't know she was pregnant gives birth in a Golden Corral okay, restaurant. So I saw this. Now, this is weird. I feel like we've talked about this because I think we went on the topic, strangest places people have given birth. I don't believe we have, but it sounds like something we would have talked about. But what's odd about this is this woman, this is her second child, and typically, after you've had one, you kind of know the signs to look for, some of the feelings. Uh, she thought she it goes, it goes, dog. <laughs> so it's like, there's nothing wrong with that. And Also depends on what she ordered, I suppose. Maybe it didn't settle with her. I like kind it. of crazy, but the the funniest I thing thought ab- I had a too. Yeah, exactly. She thought she ha- <laughs> was having whoop. some cramps, and well, out you, came you a never, child. You've heard the stories, like, because you know how pregnancies vary between every, like, even the same woman has like different pregnancies. Sure. So you've heard the stories of people giving birth and didn't even know they gave birth. Y- yes, I have heard it that was as well. Like, oh, like, oh my, what's that? Like I was sleeping in bed, and I Is woke that a up with foot? I found a baby in my bed, and it's like, what? yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, I would not surprise, especially the Golden Corral. And what I love about that is you know there was a lady going to the restroom and saw this. Oh, yeah, I heard it. And used the restroom still. It was like, I'm going to take a big fat one right next to this baby. and make. Yeah. It. Excuse me, do you have a square to spare over there on that, that stall? This, this stall's out of toilet paper. But Tavia Woodfork said she started having stomach pains while out to dinner at the chain restaurant in North uh, Little Rock on May 4th, but got obviously more than what she bargained for. What I think is interesting, though, is she named her child after the Whoa. restaurant. Did you read the whole article? Oh, I, yes. There's okay. some there's some bangers in here. Yeah. There's some bangers, yes. Wanna, like the whole not knowing she's pregnant thing? That's what I said right off yeah. the bat. Oh, gosh, she, I missed that. That was the whole point of the story. Oh, really? <laughs> I thought you were just like, oh, wow, Golden Corral. No, 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 no. No, the whole story is she didn't even know she was pregnant. Oh, and this that. being her second child, you would think she would have kind of known what to look for. Oh, I thought you meant more look for, like, feeling of, oh, I'm giving birth. Yes, I need that. to know when I give birth. Yes, all of Not that. Not because she didn't know she was pregnant from the very beginning. Well, what I think is great is she named her child Corral, the oh, middle like name, it. which is kind of sweet. And I kind of like this idea of naming your children after the place where you give birth. So you'd be like, well, yeah, this is my oldest Kenny. We call him Circle K. 
Yeah. You know, or or this is Oscar, my youngest, but everybody just calls him Bucky's. Mount Fiji. And we call him Bucky's. Mount Fiji. Yeah, climbing Mount Fiji and oh. getting birth, dog. Wow. That's that's really not knowing well, if I mean, you're gonna climb up Mount Fiji. It's pretty cool, right? It is pretty cool. You can be like, yo, Elon, put me in space. <laughs> Why? Because I want to give birth in space. So I can call my kids space. So this would you call him space? What would you call him? If it was a girl or a guy, what would you if you gave birth in space, there's so many names you could like I, I don't know. Elon's names are quite well, I these mean, are like equations. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mathematical equations, right? This is pretty interesting, though. Um, is she's, this is, uh, the, the grandmother was quoted as saying, the baby was six pounds. Quote, it was a full baby. <laughs> as opposed to what? Yeah, I totally missed Miss Woodfork. You, you meant that she didn't know she had a baby. I thought No, you... man. She went to, in to use the restroom because she thought she had to make a dookie and but, had a baby. But she did but. What a I, full baby. What I'm trying. What I'm trying to tell the audience is, I thought she knew she was pregnant, and Mm-mm. she was just going to the golden crown to get Mm-mm. some grub, and then Mm-mm. she felt weird, and then it just baby came out. But if you think about it, it's kind but of a she smart. She literally did not know nope. she was even impregnated. Nope. So. And if you think about it, it's kind of a financially smart thing to do. Have your baby at a golden crown. It's probably cheaper than at a hospital, and the food's probably and better. And you get a meal. Every, a meal out of the deal meal every year. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Man. I would. I would put that on the door. Saying we're this place is so clean, you can have a baby in it mm-hmm. on the bathroom. That, that's true. I, I mean, would, I would do that. I think you can have a baby. But anywhere, that also, that's but, inviting people. Well, I'm just saying it's kind of the a folks. Funny... The folks who were there uh, as she was leaving on a stretcher and saw her with a baby started applauding as she was leaving. Oh, this. Baby. Yeah, congratulations, congratulations. So this is a beautiful, beautiful. That story, would be kind of wild though. <laughs> think about your eating golden corral, and you're like 75 years old. You're there every Tuesday night. Yeah. With, with your significant other, having mm-hmm. your pie or whatever, and then. Next thing you know, you see a stretcher, and you're like, oh, man, is that Bill? And it's not Bill. It's this woman giving birth. And Yeah, that's a whole new um, concept on takeout, if you think yeah. about it, man. I would have live-streamed it. Can I get a doggy bag for this? How much trouble do you think you get for live-streaming that? I mean... How much trouble? You know you're going to trouble. It depends on the side. If it's your OnlyFans, you can get away with anything. Yeah, okay. All right, man, when we come back, because it's a pretty good time to take a break, we're going to talk about getting high at the baseball game. What? Okay, cool. Yep. Audience of One, Wednesdays at 10 a.m. right here on Conroe's 106.1 and 104.5. Listen to the brain droppings of local hosts, me, Andrew Belschner, along with the jewel of Montgomery County Radio, Dick Schisler. Topical musings, news stories, oddities, or just weird conversations that we normally have with ourselves, all mixed together with the occasional guest. You can also find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Apple Podcasts. All right, we're back with Audience One here on uh, Lone Star Community Radio. We're available on podcasts every Wednesday at 10 o'clock live on Facebook, YouTube. Not necessarily live, but we're a new episodes available every Wednesday at 10 o'clock. Recorded live. Recorded live, I mean, yeah. we're live right now, aren't we? Until you want me to start making edits, because... Oh, yeah, this show is so highly edited. Oh, Let yeah. me tell you, we have to tape this thing together. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's difficult, you know? <laughs> But uh, but yeah, we had a great first half. Got yeah, kind of caught up because we've been, you've been gone. But now yeah. we're gonna get back into the nitty gritty. You no, know, we were stuff. talking about uh, airplane etiquette and some of the things that are not acceptable. There is a new um, phenomenon. Uh, I think it's probably more the younger Gen Gen Z bros that are flying. Um, it's called, now. I asked you earlier if I could say this word on the radio, and you said, "Hmm." So I'm going to uh, rephrase it. But um, it's called. Uncooked dogging, but in use another you word. Say it. Okay, because I mean, raw dogging. Yes, raw dogging while on an airplane, and it doesn't mean what you think it would mean. But basically, raw dogging on an airplane means you use no devices, no stimulation, no movies, no music, no nothing. You're just basically staring straight ahead. And apparently, this is a new viral trend oh to see gosh. who can go the longest on these flights while raw dogging it. <laughs> I like it. I mean, that's. You never told me if I could say it, so no, I was I, I was trying I'm to be saying, creative. It really you just said hmm, so I didn't know. I love that though. Well, I thought the question was more: what's a more creative way to say this? And I was like, I don't really know. I mean, I don't no, I know, specifically but... said, can I say this uh, on the radio? I don't. You know, I don't pay attention. To the text well, messages. if you have been underneath a rock, then maybe you did not hear about the Hawk Tua girl last oh, week. Yeah. But oh my gosh, she basically 
has owned the internet like for an it. entire week and a half. It's all positive. It's all positive, man. Unbelievable how things like this go viral. Um, I don't think it happened, you know, just recently. I think this video is actually several months old. It finally took hold. And, and it's so funny. On. It is very funny. Um, but it got me thinking about viral fame in general. Okay. You know, and, and, and people who go viral. So like Kim Kardashian is the pinnacle of viral fame. Yeah, see, okay. So you're kind of bringing up something that I wanted to talk about. Because to me, there's two types of ways of being virally famous. You can have something that happens organically, like as in the case with Hawk to a girl, unplanned, spontaneous. Yeah. She didn't intend to be famous, but she suddenly becomes that. And then you have other people who make videos in an attempt to go viral. And I honestly think it's probably about 50-50 in terms of what goes viral these days, the, the organic and then the, you know, the, the intentional ones. But I have to admit the organic ones to me are much, much more funny. Yeah, well, I mean, it's also something where, like, like you said, the unintentional and intentional ones. But then there's the unintentional ones have such a spectrum mm -hmm. because it's kind of like what society think is funny that day. Like the Hawk Tua thing, that, that premise has always been going on on social media where they ask girls yeah the man on they, the street yeah man on the street's always been it's there. a real easy way and look i'm you know i'm not going to disparage these guys it's a real easy way to make content yeah you know you go out to a bar scene at around 11 12 1 o'clock in the morning when bars are letting out you do man on the street questions and you just edit out you know what you want to hear yeah one. and you're gonna you're bound to run into some gold which is exactly what happened here so more power to them but like we're, but it's, I think it's easy to do i think we were talking about the other week there's an unintentional one on the spectrum of like accidental Posts or something like that. Oh yeah, there's that as well. And then like it was a, that senator posted a picture of him cooking right. And talked about that meat, and you're like, uh, what's going on? Well, there here? was one several years ago of a man who took a picture of the scale because he had been losing weight, and he took a picture. He was naked at the time, and there was a reflection of his oh, yeah. nudity. Yeah, <laughs> and he and you're like, oops, oops. And then of course he's like, no, no, that's not my my genitals. Yes, yes, it is. Unintentional. Yeah. Well, Those are that, great. The that, Kardashian. What was his name? Were, were it Wiener. Anthony Weiner, didn't he? Oh, to, like on well, a, yeah. You know talking about the guy who was yeah. running for something? Didn't he post something? I don't remember And accidentally story. included like the underage girl or whatever, and uh, they're like, oops. Man, I don't remember. I have I have taken him, I've struck him from my memory banks. Was well, something that was, because the internet's hilarious, and like when people post stuff, it's like, uh -huh. yeah, you know people are going to like re remember all of this stuff. Yeah, like, and you know, it's sad though in a way too, the people who gain that viral fame the first time when they try and recreate it. And it never goes good the second time. You know, I, I liked you for the first thing. Yeah. Right? And the second thing's never good. Well, so like I'm Biden. wondering what's next. Joe on... Biden just keeps having hits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he has hits, all right. Speaking of hits, did you see the uh, presidential debates? Yeah, I watched a little bit about it. I was working at the time. I was at Disney. Then, uh, I didn't see it. And then I was like, you know, I'm curious to see how it's covered. Because I, I understand how the, the debates work. But it's like, you know, there's always... People are so fast to post stuff afterwards yeah it's, so it's like, almost instantaneous yeah. now and i i watched a lot of that and that was entertaining yeah i got back to the hotel and saw clips of it and i went uh oh something didn't go well for one of them yeah <laughs> and it's kind of one of those things and i think uh, unfortunately we uh there's too many funny things to make, <laughs> make fun about it and one thing i will say because i'm not very political but it, it to me it wasn't in donald trump's character not to make fun of biden I, was sitting there I think he like, held back. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, there's so many opportunities he, to make yeah, fun he, of this dude. He could have done more. And, oh, I mean, like, because in my mind, I'm like, that guy just straight killer when it comes to that I, kind of I stuff. I think had there been a crowd there, um, he probably likely would have done more. Oh, but it was, really? it was, I didn't know there was No, any and there was nobody there. So it was just the people, the panelists in front of him. So I think if he were, was reacting to some crowd noise, he would have gotten oh, a little you think more so? amped. Oh, he would yeah, have made it more of a show. Yeah, Because there spectacle. really was several, several moments where I was like, how are you not trashing this dude right now? Even if it's just personal. Yeah, because there was like I think there was a, what I love is when old people get mad. Mm -hmm. It's like you can see all of their life force being focused on this one thing they're trying to do because they're so angry. And I think there was a scene where uh, President Joe Biden was like, "You're a jerk," but like the way he did it, I was like, "I've seen old people get that mad, and it's a fifty-fifty chance you're gonna have a stroke." Right? You know what I'm talking about? You can you see. The they're like you can hey, see man. the focus. Hey, man. You can see the focus. He's like, and you know what? You you were the, you're a jerk. Oh, you're he, the, he you're the mean one, man. You got the morals of an alley cat, man. Uh, he he uh, he lived. He lived through that statement. And uh, well, tying these first two stories together here, how long is it until we actually have like an Instagram influencer as president? Because I feel like ooh, that's the next. No, I think it's that's gonna, the next big thing. I think what's going to happen is the the media is going to put that as a polling thing. 
mean, all it has to do is poll well and Hawk Tua is your next vice well, president. Well, I don't really mean that. I meant more if they're going to care. It takes it's a small creep. So the first one's going to be, hey, Donald Trump has twenty million followers on Instagram. You know, and then everyone's going to get compared that way. So it's like when it comes to the presidential race, like here's the following stats from our guys. <laughs> yeah. And one of the stats is how many, how many followers yep, they have. Yeah, I, I do think though we're going to have somebody with several million followers that makes some sort of comment and they end yeah. up becoming president. I mean, I, I, just, I, I think that's where we're going. Well, I think maybe, maybe. I okay. don't know who though. I don't oh, know. I don't know. I don't know yet either, but. Because there is, like, to me, Donald Trump, everyone liked him because he was on The Apprentice and he's been around. He's been in the news for like 50 years. Yeah, exactly. He was a known quantity beforehand. I'm talking about someone who is just specifically known from their fame on the internet as an influencer. No, it would probably be that lady who uh, now she's like an activist. She's like, shame on you. I don't know. When she was like 15, she went in front of like the UN. I forget her name. Must not have uh, left much of an she's impression She's like a climate change lady. She's young. She's, uh, oh. You know what I'm talking about? I know, yeah, but, but I don't know But she did that speech that became viral. Yeah. It was like, shame on you. Yeah. And then I always like that. I love when people shame other people. It's like, all right, yeah, get it. Give it to them. <laughs> shame on them. And then uh, that's why I really like Joe Biden. He's just like, you jerk. I love that kind of talk. I'm like, all right, you're just a big it, jerk. It was it was sad, to be honest Was with it you. sad? Yeah, it kind of was. <laughs> I, I don't know. I thought it was great. Two like, old men. It did look like something that would have happened at an uh, old folks' home. In an old folks' home. Yeah, like yeah. like the HOA exists in an old folks' community, and it's like these yep. are the two guys. Yep. They're p- pissing each other's yard, yep. and it's like, come on, guys. Like, we're, let's just hash it out. What's the, big, what's the big place in Florida, the big uh, retirement community in Florida? I forget what it's called. Well, and it, what's funny to me about debates, too, is because do you remember, I, I think they still do it. Like, I was on debate team. Oh my! And like okay. I did. I, oh, you know they still do debate. They still Absolutely. do it. Yes. And I remember because majority of the people who I was friends with were lawyers now, and like that we did debate together is like one of those things, and it was fun, and I enjoyed it. And then there was like the strategy behind debate and thinking that way is totally different from like actually doing constructive criti- criticism or anything. Correct. Like that. It's not a normal way of thinking. Yeah. And I, so I don't like it that they call it debate because. There's strategies you can pull that you might not have morals behind it. You might not have mm-hmm. any. When you have to flip, any you have to beliefs. argue both, be able to yeah. argue both sides. So, yeah, they flip again. I'm surprised no one was throwing it out there, just making fun of each other. Because there were so many opportunities to make fun of each other yeah. during that. Because like, especially Donald Trump, like I bet he gets so much crap behind uh, like at his family dinners. It's like, Dad, what's going on with the Stormy Daniels thing, dude? Like, that's pretty solid, but that's kind of weird, right? I don't well, think, don't believe everything you read. I, I bet they don't talk about it. You don't think so? No. Uh, you think he has that kind of presence where, like, you're yeah. going to get spanked or whatever? <laughs> no, I mean, I, like, that's why I love our family. We can make fun of anything, especially when it comes known. It's like, it is one of those things. And nothing, there's no, there's no rules. It's like, if you want to make fun of it. Anything goes. But, uh, but yeah, I think overall it was very exciting. And then I can't wait till. I bet there's not going to be another one. Though. I think you don't this think is, so? I think this is it, man. <laughs> They're not going to let him go out there. Win. But yeah. I wouldn't even call it a debate, though. Again, yeah, it was more of an argument between yeah. two old men. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, I think they need to change the rules where it's like, hey, we're going to choose these six topics and make it an actual debate. Because most of the time in the debate, you know what they're going to talk about. Sure. Because you have the plan and all that kind of stuff. But then again, it's like, what are you? how entertainment would be like, oh, you both agree. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it's ever really happened. No, no. They're just. I do remember in one debate, though, where the candidates were asked by the moderator to give one compliment to their competitor. They oh. had to say something nice about him. <laughs> was that like with Donald Trump in there? Or is no, that... I think this was in like a, uh, in the primaries. Oh, okay. I like in, it. On the Republican side, they had to <laughs> some, say something nice about him. No, I like his shoes. No, no, no. Oh, now, man. see, this is if you're a good debater, you could bring it up where it's like, oh, you know, they did such a great job being in Congress for so long. Or that, or you could be really passive aggressive with it. And if you were to give Donald Trump a compliment, you could say something like, "I like how well he does with the ladies." Yes, you know, he has really big hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah anyways, like moving on. German police have issued an unconventional bit of advice to England fans heading to the Euro 2024 summer soccer games, and have encouraged them to smoke. Weed instead like of it. downing pints. Why not both? This is awesome. So this is, I guess, the game. Yeah, well, you, it's probably both going to happen. And I think Germany just legalized marijuana not yeah. too long ago, I believe. And so these English soccer hooligans are coming to visit, and they know the reputation that precedes them in terms of well, how crazy they get on every the booze. Soccer fan. And this is probably Europe. true too. So they said, "Hey, ha- here's an idea. 
why don't you smoke weed instead? And this is coming from the police. Around 40,000 Three Lions supporters, I guess that's the name of the team, are set to descend on Gelkenskirchen this weekend ahead of England's upcoming group like stage. Name. Actually, I think that was last week against Serbia. Yes, Gelsenkirchen. But I think it's really funny. And there's a quote in here that says something. Uh, da, 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 da. I can't remember. It's oh, yeah. Our focus will be on fans who are drinking and potentially getting violent. That's why we place a safety precautions on all alcohol. Uh, that wasn't the quote. I can't. I, uh, well, it doesn't matter. Anyways, it was very funny. Basically, the, uh, the police are saying when you're on booze, you get really violent. Yeah. But the alcohol no, makes you no. mellow. Well, as T's getting high at the baseball game, are you familiar with the Portland Pickles? They are a minor league game up in um, Oregon. Yeah, they have a cool. They have cool hats. They they have cool hats and they have a really cool um, mascot mm -hmm. that uh, tends to get a little um, edgy, if if you know what I'm saying. Seeing as how he's a pickle, there's a lot of things that uh, phallic humor that can go on with oh, him, yeah. and has been known to do that in the past. Well, apparently, for the first time ever, that sports team will be selling hemp-derived THC products at a live sporting event, marking the very first time that weed is being sold at a professional game. All right, I'm confused what weed is now. <laughs> weed is, yeah, you're right. There's So what's hemp? I know hemp is part of the weed plant, so if you're, I thought the whole point of hemp was they want to call it hemp because it's not right. weed. Right, right. Whatever. So you can eat pickles that get you like somewhat high, or are we talking like danger close to the sun high? Or are we <laughs> well, no. It says baseball spectators will be able to buy two flavors of cycling frog THC light seltzer, passion fruit, and lemon at every pickles home game at the Walker Stadium. Each can of seltzer contains two milligrams of THC and four milligrams of CBD per can. But it would have made more sense to have like weed infused pickles. But no, this is just like that weed beer that we've talked about and other hemp products, but it doesn't go into specifics of what the other hemp products are. But this is where we're at now, man. Cycling Frog <laughs> is the name of, of one of the beers. Oh, my gosh. Unbelievable, they, man. I don't think they're even part of the MLB. Um, I mean, it's a minor league team, so aren't they by, by de facto? I don't think so. I mean, I, I mean my assumption would be Portland that. Pickles. Hmm. They're called. They're being called pioneers, by the way. It's a collegiate summer baseball league, so it's not. Oh. It's, it's not a. Okay. Well, this said professional. Well, maybe it just says live sporting, and I just assumed professional. It's just the first time you're ever going to be able. To Have buy you seen? Okay. Um, so there's been mascot related incidences. <laughs> Have there now? Uh, apparently, in 2022, Pickles mascot Dylan Pickle, Dylan T. Pickle, posted an inappropriate photo on Twitter during a social media takeover. The image appeared to show the mascot exposing his genitalia. Correct. That's what I mentioned yeah. earlier. Yep. And then another one. He was leaned back in like a lawn chair, and you could see his pickle, essentially. But it's a pickle with so another the, pickle. the costume was stolen after following that in February. And it was uh, the team had been playing in the Dominican Republic, and the luggage contained the mascot costume <laughs> stolen at the airport. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. And... Uh, it was found, it was sent to the wrong address when they found it. <laughs> That's so funny. And it's dropped off at a voodoo donut. <laughs> what is going on with the pickle? They're crazy up there in Portland, man. Absolutely crazy. Yeah. Would you like to watch a baseball game while high, Dick? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I suppose it'd be pretty cool. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> I don't really know. Well, because have you seen that new baseball trend where they play at night? In the dark? Yeah, we talked about it. In the black light baseball? Have you seen it, though? Have you like seen the videos of mm -mm, them? Mm -mm. It, it does not look entertaining you at all. You probably don't want to be stoned at that, I'm guessing. So, yeah, I don't really get that. Yeah, oh, man, crazy, man. I don't really get I couldn't follow. I, could, I, I, I couldn't imagine playing baseball or something like that. Radioactive material inserted to rhino horns in anti-poaching -po project. This is really crazy. So I, I read this headline, and I thought immediately, how is this going to work? They're going to inject some sort of radioisotope into the, into the rhino, and it's supposed to zap people as they try to come up and get them. No, apparently, though, it's, it's to uh, thwart the people at the airports. And basically what this is is um, they insert radioisotopes into the horns of live rhinoceroses, and sadly, when they are killed, when the horns try to go through um, security 
at airports. It oh, will wow. set off yeah. alarms. So it doesn't keep the rhinoceri alive, but it does bust the dudes for killing these guys inappropriately. Pretty interesting. Groundbreaking. Though. Well, this has never like, been done. I feel like that's one of those things where they do like one or two, and then everyone in the poaching community is like, we don't want to get busted. Yeah, but how many could they possibly do? It says only 20 rhinos at the rhino orphanage were in, uh, had well, these inserted saying. into their horns. That's what I'm saying. It's kind of like one of those. I'll play the odds. It's like you don't want to get busted with that, dude, because they might think you have a nuclear bomb. Right. Well, that's exactly what it is. It's going to set off all kinds of alarms. So, and then you're like, no, man, it's just my rhino horn. <laughs> It says every 20 hours in South Africa, a rhino dies for its horn. It's kind of sad. I, it's kind of crazy. Every 20 hours. Anyways, I did not realize that was still that big of a deal. But uh, this has led to their horns currently being the most valuable false commodity in the black market trade with a higher value than gold, platinum, diamonds, and cocaine. Nice. But I guess it's all about demand because I'm not really, I don't really need a horn. I don't understand what the big deal is. What's what's the well, big about a horn? That's because you don't understand cultures. I mean, I understand the diamonds and cocaine. That I completely get. But the horns, I don't know. To me, it's just not that big of a deal. Because you're not a horn guy. I'm not a, I'm not a horned guy. That's I'm not bad. a horned guy. This is a funny story. A Chinese or Chinese customs bust a woman trying to smuggle over three hundred and fifty Nintendo Switch cartridges. Where? In her bra. Oh, they're gonna say butt. No, no, not Dang. in her butt. But Nintendo Switch cartridges, they are pretty small. Yeah, they're right? like a I mean, little yeah. SD card. So I, I want you to show this picture because I think it's pretty funny. If you scroll down in that, in that article, you, they show a picture of her and what she looks like at the time she's being busted. But I don't understand this. So if you've stolen these games, why wouldn't you just put them in your bag and check your luggage? Why would you put them in your bra? Then you're going to be subject to, you know, being scanned, just like we were talking about at the, at the airport for uranium. Makes no yeah, sense, but I you mean, can see the picture. You can see these games are coming out by her underarm. It's coming out through the top of her, well, where, like, where well, her cleave is. It looked like she had a shirt on, so it's not like she just wore the bra. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you think this is after maybe she was busted? She's not just walking yeah, around like with... she put it in her bra, but then she had probably had a shirt on over the bra. It wasn't like she was wearing revealing clothing where you see, like, is that a like, game card? Isn't that Mario card? Brothers 3 at the top of your cleave there? Yeah. Thought it was pretty funny. Uh, well, what, all go right. Ahead. No, go ahead. No, I was I was going to say, you know, if you watch those shows on TV about what to catch a smuggler, you can see some pretty interesting things. It said that the um the the games had a street value of 70,000 yen, which is just under $10,000. That's a lot, a lot to put in there though. Yeah, man. It's unclear what game she was trying to steal illegally. Uh, but And we can't make them out in the picture, but we'd like to think that it's maybe Legend of Zelda or something funny like that. I don't know. Staying on this theme of people stealing things, two were arrested, including a 71-year-old man for allegedly stealing almost 3,000 boxes of Legos. Yeah. And I, I don't know if you're showing this picture to yeah, the onesies or not because I wanted you to see this, but this was the haul from 71-year-old Richard Siegel and 39-year-old Blanca Gudino, his accomplice. Some of those boxes are massive. I don't understand how you get away well, with I stealing see at some least of those. Two or three Millennium Falcon boxes, which I think right. might be technically the biggest Lego box. It's massive. And that looks like it's taking up I mean three thousand boxes, that's a ton. It's oh, gonna I take up a lot Death of space Star to do. It might be the biggest. Let's see. Yeah, let's see how much that let's see how much that is. Oh, it's gotta be four or five hundred dollars, I would think. But it says detectives co uh, conducting a search warrant at Siegel's home the next day Ooh, after busting. What? Tell me. If I'm if I'm looking at this right, like on Amazon, yep. the Ultimate Millennium Falcon set is eight hundred and thirty nine dollars. Good God! Thanks a lot, right? Biden. On Tuesday, uh, Gudino was seen stealing again from the same retailer um, before dropping off the stolen Lego sets at Siegel's Whoa. home. So he was basically just stashing the stuff for her. She would go in and steal these things. Again, not sure how she got away with some of this. They found over 2,800 boxes of Lego sets, each ranging from $20 to over 1000 That's, I mean, I'm doing the quick math here. That's got to be hundreds of thousands of dollars in Legos. Oh, yeah. Well, if that thing is almost a grand. And, and I, I imagine when some of these things started disappearing, they were probably thinking it was a 15-year-old, 16-year-old boy. And again, it's just like we, we talked about the 71-year-old man 
that was <laughs> slingshotting BBs through people's windows. There's a 71-year-old guy stealing Legos. Hey, they are pretty cool, I have to admit. I was a big Lego guy. I, I'm amazed because now I'm on the Lego shop, and now I'm having fun. Yeah. Because they make the Mona Lisa. Oh, wow. Yeah, they make just about anything. I know I've seen, like, floral arrangements now, too. Well, yeah. There's, I'm trying to see what the most expensive one. That's what I'm trying to find. It doesn't say specifically in this article, other than the LAPD is asking anyone for information on this theft ring to get in touch with them. All right, I want to show you. <laughs> look how useless this yeah, stuff. Okay. Look, look at this one. Yeah? It's what is that? Polaroid. Oh, you can a Lego Polaroid. Yeah, that is kind of useless if you think about it. That's, kind of defeats the whole purpose of a Polaroid. The strangest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, they'll make anything. Why now. is that a, a thing? But yeah, I don't. Let's see the most. I'm gonna type in what the most. It was uh, apparently this um, was a month long investigation. And why were they stealing from the same place over and over again, man? You gotta you gotta diversify. That's true. These All guys right, are idiots. Looking at the most expensive Lego set. I'm gonna say three thousand dollars. I'm probably way off. If this is right, twenty nine hundred. What did I say? Three thousand? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I was almost uh, spot on. Yeah, because there's look other, at me go. There's other ones that are like different brands. Like this one is five grand. Mm-hmm. But it's a st- it's a city and it's made not by Legos. That's by some other brick company. But the most Knock-offs. the most expensive one I could find is a Lego Racers Enzo Ferrari one to ten scale. Jeez, how big? one to ten? One to ten. That's got to be giant. Yeah, I could almost ride that. Where's the picture of that? Almost oh, it doesn't even look that big. That, then that cannot be five thousand dollars or four thousand. That does not seem right. You could also compete with one of those and probably the uh, the X Games like you were watching. Not X Games, the uh, on the games that you saw on the Ocho last week. I should ride it down the hill. Oh, yeah. they, they make it Titanic. Of course they do. And it's eight, it's seven hundred dollars. Wonder if it uh, floats. The only one I can see believable is the Super Star Destroyer, which is eighteen hundred dollars. Good grief! It's ten thousand two hundred twenty one pieces. Mm mm And what I love, it looks so basic. Does it? <laughs> yeah, let me show. I'll show. It. I'll pull it up. It looks so basic. Well, there's a lot of detail in there. Is it? Yeah, it looks like there's a lot of detail on the side of that. Like, you can't open it and, like, have a cool Death Star thing. Like, the Death Star thing, you can open and have, like, play with it. This is just, yeah, like, yeah. That's silly. It is silly. All right, what else is going on besides when, when I was Legos? Uh, well, it's probably about time for the to end the show here, if my calculations are correct. When I was at Disney, um, I saw a uh, place where you could put your hands and head through, like, in a guillotine to take a picture, you know? Because yeah. people yeah. really want to do that. And it got me thinking about the quick hit here at the end of the show. Actually, you know what? Quick hit. Quick hit kind of reminds me of like an encore from a band, except the band's already played all of its hits. <laughs> and so they're being asked to come back out and they have nothing. That's the quick hit here at the end of the show. We've already played all the hits. But no, I thought about when I saw this person posing for a picture in a guillotine. What is the last time anyone was executed by guillotine? And I have your answer. Hamida Jandubi was uh, a Tunisian convicted murderer sentenced to death in France uh, in 1968. And six years later, was convicted of kidnapping, torture, and murder of a 21-year-old uh, Elizabeth whatever. He was then sentenced to death in February of 1990, uh, 1977 by guillotine. So we actually had somebody nearly in our lifetimes executed by oh, yeah. guillotine that's pretty dope did, did you say that they built it just for that or they found an old one i i did not say they built it just for that um but i'm sure they i, I don't it doesn't say how uh, often it was used prior and to why that, did though. disney have one yeah i know it's kind of strange hey look let me put my hand and heads through here well hold on was that part of like i'm trying to think of disney so it Is was hutchback of notre dame was that in it yeah, i'm trying to remember where i saw it what park but it was one of those areas you could take a picture. Oh, look at me. I'm getting my head chopped off. <laughs> Disney. <laughs> I don't remember where it was at. Anyways. And, the, and um, by the way, the last public execution by a guillotine was in 1939. Ooh, can you imagine going and watching that? So I guess this one in 1977 was just done in private. But in 39, it was public. Would you watch public executions if they were still around? <sighs> Probably not, man. I think it depends on who it is. Yeah. But you're a monster. Especially if it's somebody who wronged you or your family. Yeah. Yeah, I want to watch. Can I pull the trigger? Right. Right. Or the lever? Lever. Or can I pull the lever? Throw the boulder down the hill? 
kind of push them over the cliff. I think the probably the most gruesome execution, I, if I remember correctly, was like when you uh, there's some term for it, but when you get pulled by horses. Oh yes, and like I all, don't know the name of your limbs. Yeah, it's pretty. It's nasty. pretty pretty crazy, it's pretty, right? It's pretty bad. Yes, it's called splitting or something like that. If I remember correctly, that's pretty. You get pulled by two horses in, in two opposite directions, well, no, or just four. being drugged behind. You get four, four, because your because two's not enough. Arm, arm, leg, leg. <sighs> and I would imagine you don't just die right after that either. Well, I know I would be doing a gambling pool. Like which which limb goes which first? Which Oh yeah, absolutely. Or which take limb squares goes on last. that. Yeah, that's pretty gross. <laughs> yeah. Well, what I love about the like the, what's weird to me about executions, especially public executions, uh huh, is the aftermath of it. Like you got to clean this stuff up, right? So like the ones back in the day, I'm like, why 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 be so messy with this? And then afterwards, you got to go home and eat dinner, and you're kind of looking yeah. at each other around the dinner, dinner table. Like, hey, remember those remember? trails we saw? Yeah. That's- yeah. Pretty weird what we saw earlier, huh? Yeah, like the beheading stuff. I don't. I never fully got. Now maybe the stone around the feet and thrown in the water. I can see mm-hmm. because it's like uh, out of sight, out of mind. Like we're, sure, we don't have to worry about it. But the stuff that was like in public, like the, the stuff we were just talking about. I don't really get it. Well, uh, I think it's to to make uh, a spectacle of you, right? So no, everybody I get knows that, but the it's idea like behind it. No one ever thinks like the crucifixion stuff throws me for a whirl because it seems like so much work. If does it now? Well, let's well, think about it. You got to get the body up there. You got to make sure it's tight. Mm-hmm. And there's different types of crucifixions. There's one with ropes. There's one with nails. And it's just like, well, we got to get the nails out. It's like thought it's, about this. Have you? Well, I just didn't like that idea. I was like, I would be pissed off. If that was my job. You're like, there's a. This is probably why things like guillotine were invented to be much more efficient with their killings. Yeah. Or <laughs> uh-huh. take days this is ridiculous. Well, that's what they would kill the queens and kings with. I don't think that was everyday execution just for. Robbing somebody. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. All right, buddy. It was nice to see you again. You know, we recorded early last time, so it's been nearly two weeks since we've recorded a show, but I'm glad we got it in. Yeah, dude. Um, have a safe 4th of July. Hey, everybody, and yeah. I will see, yes, everybody, onesies included. Make sure you like, share, follow our shows. <clears throat> Tell a friend. Make it awkward. Tell a friend. Tell subscribe. A friend. subscribe. And donate. Donate. All right, man. We'll see you next week, buddy. Bye, guys.